me what you think of my Halloween decorations. I have more. Should I add more? I don't know. Hello. Today we're talking about the concept of recreating 1920s hair. Unfortunately, this is a concept that is riddled with misinformation and questionable advice, so I hope to try and counteract some of that today with this video. So typically, this is the sort of video that would pop up around Halloween or New Year's, as that is when people like to dress up and throw the so-called Gatsby parties. And I guess we are kind of coming up on Halloween here, but as parties of all kinds and more are highly advised against in this blessed year of 2020, we're just covering it anyway because I want to. I have a lot of gripes with the modern takes on 1920s hair, but for today we are just going to chill and look at six things that can and will ruin your 1920s hairstyle. As I'm legally required by the internet consortium to say, I am not a professional fashion historian, and this video is not the be-all, end-all of 1920s hair advice. I just be out here looking stuff up on Google and being disappointed every time, so I do some more Googling to do research for videos about why the thing I found on Google made me mad. So, number one of six reasons your 1920s hairstyle probably doesn't look right. Uncurled hair. If you're into vintage already, you've probably heard it a thousand times, but it still rings true. Always curl your hair. This does not mean you have to do finger waves, specifically. If you don't have the resources to, that's completely okay. However, from your roots to the tips, your hair should be curled or have some type of texture. In the later half of the 20s, straight bobs became more popular and girls didn't have to curl their hair, so if you have a bob that is straight and it isn't long enough to pass your chin, you might be okay. However, if you think you can get away with an uncurled hairdo and your hair is longer than that, it's not gonna work. When you curl your hair, please remember that curls are not one size fits all. Beach waves are not a substitute for the type of curls you can get by doing pin curls or other vintage methods. Almost 100% of the time, you cannot achieve the curls you need by using a curling iron unless it is very small and you have a lot of time on your hands. And again, I'm not talking about finger or marcel waves, I'm talking about using an iron to curl your hair as a whole, not just what's on the scalp. Of course, if you want to do marcel waves and a tutorial calls for a hot iron, go for it. If you have long hair and you plan on doing a faux bob, no question, you will need to curl your hair. Not only will this shorten your hair, it will give it the texture you need to be able to pin it up to the correct length. And with that in mind, we can move on to point two of why your 1920s hairstyle doesn't look right, and that is the length. 1920s hairstyles, and I'm talking like bobs specifically, are always shorter than you think they are. If your hair reaches your shoulders, it's too long. In fact, if your hair reaches the point to where it's past your chin, it's already too long. If you put your hair up into a faux bob, which at the time was equally as popular as going for the big chop, you should not be able to feel it on the back of your neck. If you look at yourself in profile, it should line up with whatever the length of the hair on the side of your head is. Keep in mind again that hair, whether it was truly bobbed or faux bobbed, rarely passed the ears and never passed the chin. If a girl kept her long hair, she wouldn't just let it hang loose, she would have to put it up in some type of way, whether that was a faux bob or a bun or some other pseudo Edwardian hairstyle. On the topic of faux bobs, something I see a lot in Gatsby or flapper inspired hair tutorials is that one, like I just mentioned, the hair is too long, and two, the hair is fluffy for some reason. I'm gonna show you what I mean, but to sum it up, your hair shouldn't be so fluffy on the bottom that if you choose to wear a headband, which I will get into later, it shouldn't look like it's squeezing the life out of your brain, which, trust me, that's what it looks like when the top is all sleek and nice and the bottom is this fluffy mess. Again, another reason to curl properly. Next, we have a point that I have almost never seen mentioned in any 1920s hair tutorials that I venture to watch, although to be fair, I haven't exactly watched many, so who knows, maybe everybody's talking about it, but if they are, it sure ain't reaching anyone's ears. Wink, wink. That being said, point three is tucking your hair behind your ears. You should never tuck your hair behind your ears. I admit I do not know if there was a societal or cultural reason behind why women didn't expose their ears, but I haven't seen many pictures of women from the 1920s with their ears sticking out. Of course, there are always exceptions, but for the most part, their hair was almost always covering their ears, coming forward enough to frame the face. This is why hairspray is your friend. It will help keep your hair in place so it's not falling into your face and tempting you to commit the egregious error of tucking your hair behind your ears. I found this interesting quote in a movie magazine from 1922 discussing the topic of the censoring of kisses on the screen, and this topic of ears was briefly touched upon as well, albeit in a somewhat satirical manner. Here it is as follows. Personally, I think it was Viola showing her ears that demoralized Gaston to the kissing point. 
She says she felt more immodest bearing them than she did in receiving her osculatory reward. So that's that on that. And for the love of tasteful glamour, if you choose to wear a headband, which I promise I will go into more detail on in just a bit, please don't wear it under your hair. Point number four ties in a tiny bit with the headband concept. Showing your forehead is a no-go for most 1920s hairstyles. Yes, it would be covered with a low-sitting hat, but before the hat, the hair had to cover it, and it's the same with headbands as well. The only exceptions to this would be hairstyles with the hair parted down the middle or swept back from the forehead entirely, but in the case of the middle part, the hair would be waved enough to cover a decent amount of forehead. If a woman had bangs, those were curled or waved as well, generally blending into the surrounding hair. The exception is the straight bob, where bangs would be cut just as straight as everything else. If you have short straight bangs but long hair, this will be kind of hard to fudge, but if you curl the rest of your hair and wave your bangs just a little bit to blend them into the rest of your hair, I think it'll have a better effect than just trying to combine straight bangs with curled hair. Point number five is a detail that may or may not break your look, and it has to do with your hair part not being strong enough. You may part your hair down the middle, the left side, the right side, doesn't matter. Regardless of where you put it, it needs to be completely straight. In my observational opinion, I think it helps add an element of uniformity among a full head of curls. It is a very small detail, but I think worth mentioning just as a little note to keep in mind. Now we come to our sixth and final point that will most likely ruin your 1920s hairstyle, and that is the very unconventional opinion of mine that wearing a headband will do just that. Here is why, and also why I've decided to put this point last, despite mentioning it several times throughout. The reason I am of this opinion is because unless you have all of the previously stated things in order, wearing a headband will not add to your hairstyle. In fact, it will only turn it into a dumpster fire. Just like I mentioned with the fluffy brain head hair squeezing situation, the headband has to complement your hairstyle and fit with the overall look. Headbands are an accessory, not a requirement, and just like anything, over-accessorizing looks tacky and awful no matter what era. And chances are, if you're pairing it with a polyester fringe dress with shoulder-length gloves and pearls and fishnets for some reason, you're gonna look a hot mess and nothing you can add will fix it. Thus, get points 1 through 5 in order first, and then consider point 6. Well, people, that is our final point. Six things to consider when you're doing your hair for whatever 1920s themed atrocity it is you're attending. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, I made this video based on the observations that I've made of hair in that era. Obviously, it's impossible to completely 100% accurately recreate these hairstyles, even if we do acquire the tools from that era. So many minute details have changed over time, from things as broad as human knowledge of hair to the types of shampoo we use now, and... Even these tiny details can affect how hair is styled across time. But we can do our due diligence to the past and put a little bit of heart into researching the best ways to fake it. I admit, I don't know a lot about styling hair, but I can play a mean game and spot the difference. So today I wanted to point out those things to pay attention to when attempting 1920s hairstyles. That is all I have for you today. Leave any requests in the comments, subscribe to see them in action, and like to show me your thumbs. Goodbye. Is it viola or viola?